In this lesson, we'll dive into how CPM scheduling works inside of Primavera. We'll show you how to invoke the scheduler, and we'll also show you some of the nice tools that go hand in hand with the scheduler. Let's set the scene. We have the rail car maintenance facility project open, and the status of the project is such that all the activities have relationships. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see every activity has relationships to and from those activities. Now, as I mentioned before in previous lessons, if we look at our Gantt chart, we notice that all the activities are stacked on top of each other, and they haven't been uh, expanded out to start and finish after each other. And again, that's because we haven't actually scheduled this project. The scheduler assigns start and finish dates to our project. We can see this in our date fields as well. Every activity uh, has a start date of January 6, 2014. That, of course, is this start date of the entire project. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and schedule this project and tell Primavera to expand out those activities and assign appropriate start and finish dates to each activity. Here's how we do it. There's a magic key in Primavera. Everybody knows this key, and the key is F9. Okay, so you can hit F9 on your keyboard. You can also use the toolbar and find the little icon here with the clock and go ahead and click that. This brings up my scheduler window, and this is the window where I can actually invoke the scheduler. It's pretty straightforward, and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and do it right now. We'll hit the schedule button and have a look at the Gantt chart as we do this. It's pretty quick. Let me just make a little bit more room for you, but you notice just by starting at the uh, starting by looking at the start and finish dates, you'll see that we now have appropriate start and finish dates. And if we uh, scroll out here to the Gantt chart, you can see how everything has now been expanded out and across. There we go. All the way to the end of the project. Little trick, double click in the Gantt chart to scroll. So if I double click anywhere in the Gantt chart, it automatically scrolls to that area of the project. As I mentioned, the other uh, output from CPM scheduling that we get is the project's finish date. So we now know that this project finishes on the 1st of March 2019. It's quite a lengthy project. Looking at the Gantt chart once more, um, activities that are in red, you probably have guessed this, are in fact my critical path activities. Any activity that is red is an activity that's on my critical path. Any activity that is green is an activity that has float or is not on my critical path. What we'll do now is show you that the fields that we looked at in the whiteboard session are also available as fields in Primavera. So we'll go ahead and open this layout, a special layout that we've built called CP Schedule Analysis, CP for Critical Path. And opening this layout, what we'll notice are these four date fields here. My early start, my early finish, my late start, my late finish. Those are the dates that we calculate in CPM scheduling and we did in the whiteboard session, the previous lesson. Those dates are not make-believe, they exist, and they're here in Primavera. And as you become a more refined scheduler, you'll find that you may want to look at those dates more and more. We also have our total float field. And if you recall, total float is the difference between, say, the late start and the early start date, or the late finish and the early finish date. They calculate to be the same thing. So any activity that has total float positive total float is an activity that has some flexibility. And now we can see the differences. So the difference between say August 29th and November 
17th turns out to be about 56 days of elapsed time according to the calendar that's set up for this project as well. So now we can see total float. Okay, and you can see that because this is a large project with large long activities like many are some are in the hundreds of days we have large total float values as well. Let's look at um, a very handy tool that can help us do some schedule analysis.